This is Ernie C from Body Count. You're tuned in to the Pit Media, number one. All right, welcome to the Pit Media. I am Evan J. Thomas. I am here with Ernie. Yes. Of Body Count. Yes. How's it going today, brother? Everything is good today. You know, we're ready to do some rock and roll, some playing, you know, all that good stuff. You're ready to jam the fucking second stage like I'm, you've never done before? I'm ready to play, man, you know? I'm ready to get it up to 110 decibels, you know? <laughs> Get it right. So when you go out to the stage, when you see those fans looking back at you, you obviously feed off that, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we get a try to get a pit going. You know, we still we still one of those bands that love to get a pit going. You oh, know, yeah. it's a, it's getting to be a, art, a lost art. You know, you gotta have certain bands to get a real pit going. But we love a real pit. We love some real. Pit, I'm expecting know? it to open up for you guys like really early on too. We're, we're, we're playing. You know, on our new record, we cover "Raining Blood," right? Yeah. And that's okay. a, that's our first song that we open with. You know? Oh shit! So that's, that's a lot of fun right there. So speaking of the new album, you guys work with Dave Mustaine and also Max Cavalera. Yeah. How was it collaborating with those and, guys and on Blood Love? And Randy, and Randy, and Randy from Lamb of God. So you know. Yeah, but you know, it, 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 it was just so natural. It's not like we went out and said we got to get so and so to be on this record. We just started doing a record, and we know I've known Dave since the '80s. You know, a long time, and it, it just I, him and I started talking on Twitter. And they just got together. Max, you know, Max, we know Max from Sepultura. From Max was in, we were in Arizona. Max was in Arizona. He lives there. He came to one of our shows and said, what are y'all doing? We're recording a record. Oh, I got to be on this record. <laughs> Next thing you know, you got there Max you go. writing the song. Max wrote the song. Really? He came with a, with a cassette and wrote the, wrote the song. <laughs> and then, um, Randy, Not shocking, with a cassette? <laughs> cassette, cassette. <laughs> People have cassettes. And, and Randy is just my friend. You know, I quit drinking years and years ago. And Randy quit drinking years and years ago. You know, in rock and roll, sometimes you gotta yeah. put, pump the brakes. <laughs> so, uh, Randy's been my friend when I quit drinking. So, he's like, you doing a record? I'm on it. But that's what that's what that's what's supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. That's what we contrived and figured out, you know. So what actually prompted you to stop drinking and were you doing that partying all the time? Oh, you know. <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> the family? No, no, not, not really family. I wasn't that kind of that kind of drunk. It was just it was just time to to stop, you know. It was just like I needed to get up in the morning. Gotcha. So I, I, I get up at seven, I go to the gym, you know, and all that kind of good stuff, you know. I'm I get all my friends back. I'm able to play this band again. Because I took time off from doing that. Got it. It's hard to, you know, everything works out. Everything works out. So speaking of that, you were at the you're at the gym. How often do you go? Oh, I go as much as I can. No, I go I go at seven o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the morning for an hour and a half, two hours, and that starts my day. By the time everybody gets up, I'm about nine o'clock when Bingo. people start working and figuring it out. I'm already done, so it helps out a lot. And what do your workouts consist of? How do you stay in shape? What do you do? I, I lift weights. Cardio. You know, I, I, I'm in a book called the. Um, <laughs> the, um, I think it's called the, the the rock and roll remedy with Dave, with uh, Duff McKagan with uh, you know a bunch of rockers about you know how you quit doing drugs and drinking and you get in shape you know because a lot of rockers have done this yes, over many. the years you know and so uh, I always say I like the safety of the gym because my friends are like let's go hiking up on Laurel up in the canyons I'm like no no there's bugs there's, there's snakes That's fun, there's, though. there's wolves <laughs> there's all kind of things that you don't see. I like the inner city experience of, of getting gotcha. in shape. <laughs> So you don't like being chased by wolves no, or bears that, or anything like that? That's not a thing that works on my resume. <laughs> you know, you know I, li I like the safety of the gym. You know, I like the machines that spot you. I like talk. I like talking to people at the gym. You know, the running, scenery. Yeah, you know, running up a hill, you really don't have a lot of conversation. Well, you know what I mean by scenery at the gym. Yeah, exactly. Okay, exactly. Just making sure. <laughs> so we're gonna switch gears a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, with Prophets of Rage coming back, mm -hmm. doing the whole political thing. Mm -hmm. What do you think about the moniker "Bad Presidents Make for Great Music"? Well, I said my first record. This record I did, we recently did. We did. I said "No Lies Matter" over to Tom Morello, and he says it's good to have an uncensored voice out there. You know, sometimes you know, music right now isn't necessarily reflecting what's going on in the, in the world, you know. So I think it, it needs a little more of that for people, musicians in general, to focus on really what's going on and not, you know, 
other issues. Just get back to it. You know, our band is political at times, but we're not a political band. You know, it's the same band that can do No Lives Matter, and then turn around and sing KKK, bitch. You know, so we have a sense of humor about it. We don't yeah. take it too serious. We're not trying to pump the, you know, yeah. trying to say this and that. But, you know, you know it's, it's a weird time for, for everything, you know? It, it is. And being 2017, from when you guys started, did you think, and this might be a little timid for some people, you think racism was as big as it is now as it was back then? It seems like we never really graduated well, from it. You know, with the, and I hate know, it. With, with, the, with the, the internet and all that kind of stuff, it, it makes... It brings out closet racists that would never come Bingo. to your face and say it to you. Yeah. You know that's what that goes back to our last record when we talk about talk shit, get shot. You know that, 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 people are saying things that they would normally never say to you. For no one's sure. gonna come up to me and call me a, a name. You know what I mean? But they'll do it on the internet. I, I, people do this all the time. So the internet has made racism popular. Social media tough guys, basically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People that you would never do that on the street would never come. Oh, to you for and sure. Yeah. And and unfortunately, like you, like you said, it's as rampant as it's ever been before. It, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, you would think that people would get it by now, that we aren't the problems against each other. It's not black and white and, and red. That's not the what's going on. you got to look a little higher up, you know, at yeah, the exactly. color of green that makes everything that, work like Very that. well to say that, because obviously the way our country's going, it seems like that's how things are. It's the rich versus the poor. Yeah. Da, da, da. It seems like the government's trying to separate everybody. Everybody's trying to separate everybody. Why can't like this, like today, metal community come together, all races have fun? What's up with that? It, 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 it's you know, it's, it's class war. Class war is, is going on in this country, and we don't realize it. They're trying to get people at the bottom just to fight. I have nothing against you. I love exactly. you. You know, I love you. I love these people. I'm poor, you know, I'm, so you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, a black man that plays to a primarily white audience. You know, so I. I understand this, but it's like people don't get it. I mean, it's like, and then they, they, they come to me and they say, "There's a lot of racism in metal." I'm like, I don't see it. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't, I don't really it. see it either. I but I, I, I and hear you're it. on stage, so I you hear know. this. I'm like, no. I, we played damn near at a clan meeting one time. They loved us, you know, back in the nineties. <laughs> you know, damn near, <laughs> especially with Cop Killer. So, how has that one song? How did that song change you guys? as a band. Well, you know, the song people think the song made a lot of money and all this. No, it did. It just made us really popular and made people aware of our position, you know what I mean? People still know that song right now, you know? And and, and the, when we did the song, you know, 25 years ago. I have the cassette. 20 25 <laughs> years ago, you know, it, it was a, a a big deal. But now the song is just Exactly. You can re-release it right now, but then people were like, oh, they're, they're saying go, they still wouldn't get it. We're not saying go shoot cops. Exactly. And, but people are just shooting cops now for the hell of shooting cops. Now, they really distorted the message. The people that are God. killing cops now, that message is distorted. That's not the message we were saying. We we're just saying there's bad cops, you know, and we're just trying to figure out who's good. Who's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so unfortunately, that's the way it went. Yeah. So, from Body Count, what are, what are you guys doing the rest of this year? What are you guys doing in 2018? How are we going to play some shows? You know, ICE is doing Law and Order. You know, I I, I, I uh, spend my time now helping out the youth of America through Music Cares. You know, the young kids on heroin. You know, there's an epidemic going on that they're really not talking about. They're talking about it, but they're not getting what's going on. You know, and I, t I try to help out the, the kids. You know, the twenty somethings uh, addicted to heroin. Not, not even twenty something. There's teenagers. Yeah. Know? So what do you do to help help them out? Do you have a uh, well, charity we, program? No, no, no. We Music Cares is just, uh, you know what we do. Do it we put them in rehab, I speak at rehab, and, you know, take them to meetings and try to pull them off the gutter and, you know, tell them there's more to, the sun shines every day. Yeah. And it's not that dark. Things aren't that dark. Gotcha. Well, man, I really appreciate it. Cool. Thank you so much. Thank you.